Rodney Nigel Mayfield. Straight butter dating and relationship talk. Now that's straight butter. Welcome to Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk. I'm Rodney Nigel Mayfield. We got a hot and controversial show for you today. All things contrary to God's word must be exposed and God's truth must be told. Today's show topic is Exposing False Prophets, series number one. Rodney Nigel Mayfield versus Jamal Harrison Bryant. Let's do it. All right. Welcome back to the show. Before I get started, I'd like to ask everyone that watches this video to subscribe to this channel if you have not already done so and click the notification bell and the drop down menu that says all so that every time I upload new video content, you'll be notified. Also, like, share and please leave a comment. Again, the show topic is Exposing False Prophets, series number one, Rodney Nigel Mayfield versus Jamal Harrison Bryant. Okay, fam, we got a special guest in the house on Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk Show. Let's welcome man of God and YouTuber, Anthony Simmons. Welcome to the show, my brother. Thank you for coming. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm very honored that, uh, that you would even have me on the show, and I'm just hoping that everything, praying that everything goes well, and I know it will because you're a man of God. I want to give a big ups to your channel because I know that you stand on God's word, and that's the most important thing in today's time, so... Hey, you're welcome, man. No doubt. No doubt. So how are you doing today, my brother? Man, I'm doing awesome. I'm blessed. It's another day that the Lord has made and I can't do nothing but rejoice in it. So I'm doing awesome, man. How about yourself? That's right. Uh, I'm doing fine, man. I'm doing fine. Listen, I'm glad we were able to finally connect with one another and do this well-needed show. Now, uh, Anthony, tell my audience the name of your YouTube channel and where they can go to subscribe and watch your bold, unadulterated content. Well, if you want to find me on YouTube, you can also you can find me on YouTube at Higher Heights. On YouTube, you'll see my a picture of this lovely guy face on there. Uh, you'll see me standing on there, Higher Heights. On YouTube, you'll also can find me on the platform Instagram at Higher Heights underscore seven four two three. That's Higher Heights underscore seven four two three is where you can find the content that uh god has blessed me to create all right awesome awesome all right man well now before i get into this topic let me say this to true christians and non-believers in christ sin is whatever god says sin is not whatever the culture says sin is or is in romans chapter 3 verse 4 it says let god be the truth and every man a liar which means if anyone says anything contrary to God's word, then that person is not speaking under the authority of God. That person is a liar and not to be believed nor followed. You see, folks, you measure all truth based on the word of God. And if it doesn't align with God's word, it's not true. God's word is the standard by which all truth is measured. Let me say that again. God's word is the standard by which all truth is measured. All right. Anthony, what are your initial thoughts about the topic of today's show, Exposing False Prophets, series number one, Rodney Nigel Mayfield versus Jamal uh, Harrison Bryant? Well, let me say this real quick. I know that there's going to be those that are watching that may be concerned with us calling out false prophets. And uh, to those, I would say that this is one of our duties as people of God to do this. And also, I want to remind people that this has been going on since biblical times. If you look in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible proclaims that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. And this is what uh, this is the goal here today. I believe it is, Mr. Rodney. Uh, the goal here is today not to slander, 
not to tear down, but to correct some of the things that are being spewed out over the pool pits and to teach those who are lost and who are consuming this garbage on a day to day basis from Sunday to Sunday of or on via social media platforms, wherever they may find it. And I like to refer to false teachers as the fast food. Um, we all know that fast food is quick, it's convenient, but the long-term ramification that it has on our flesh uh, is dire. Uh, and when we go to the spirit, when we go to the spirit, this this fast food trash and garbage is has even more dire consequences to the spirit. So when we refer to God's word, His unadulterated truth, I refer to that as whole, as whole food. Some of us don't like to sit down and take the time to get a meal that's properly prepared, uh, but we know that the long-term effects can be awesome and immeasurable when it comes to getting the proper food that we need. Uh, number two, I believe that a lot of us in the body of Christ spend most of our time judging and turning our nose up at the so-called worldly folk. Um, that in and of itself is a mistake for several reasons. One, because it points out a serious affliction that God warns us about in his word, which is the disease of self-righteousness. Two, it shows our lack of knowledge and understanding where God states in 1 Peter chapter 4 and 17, and I know you're going to like this one, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 17 states, For the time has come that judgment must begin in the house of God. And so I'm going to say that for the people yeah. in, in the back. The time has come, and now there is, that judgment must begin in the house of God. So you see, our primary concern is the body of Christ should be more focused on correcting God's house at all times. And lastly, I want to say this on this note. To all that are watching, read and to study for yourselves. Paul wrote several letters to the churches, correcting and instructing the body of believers. Jesus overturned tables in the temple and Jesus never rebuked the lost. If you really study, in fact, if you really study the life of Jesus Christ, as he always he always took issues with the so-called leaders, aka the high priests, the scribes and the Pharisees who were misrepresenting God's word. So my issue is, I've been in so many houses of God, straight butter. I've been in so many houses of God where we got just enough Holy Ghost to shout, to shout, ta to slobber and fall over pews and say, "Amen, preacher," <laughs> but not, but, but not enough, quite enough Holy Ghost to correct false doctrine. Not quite enough Holy Ghost wow. to uh, correct the misbehaviors and the ill behaviors that we have in the body of Christ. So we we don't have enough Holy Ghost to turn over tables. So those were my initial thoughts on this subject today. Well, man, that was profound, man. Uh, you're actually uh, absolutely correct, man. And I can't uh, add to that at all, man. But you know what? Uh, I just uh, feel like we're going to have uh, uh, the next 30 minutes. We're going to have spirited conversations about uh, this particular topic. And I'm looking forward to it. Now, Anthony, I've shared a few video links with you of self-proclaimed Pastor Jamal Bryan saying some sinful and outlandish things that is against Bible scripture. But I'm going to read eight things this false prophet has said that's totally against God's word. Then I'll share the video footage with my audience. Then you and I will chop it up about this topic. Cool? That's cool with me. All right. All right. Cool. All right. Number one, Jamal Bryant. He curses and uses profane language in the pulpit. He references Chris Brown's song, These Hoes Ain't Loyal, while speaking to his congregation. Number two. He said Jesus was wrong 85% of his life and out of order while in the presence of pastor and gospel singer Marvin Sapp and his congregation. Number three, he says he believes in open marriages while speaking to comedian Monique and her male associate. Number four, Jamal Bryan apologizes to the LGBTQ community for black pastors insensitivities that may have hurt the LGBTQ community. Number five, he said there needs to be another gospel for older men who want to have sex and not wait until marriage. Number six, he evolved, he's evolved on homosexuality and same-sex marriage like one of his mentors, T.D. Jakes, has. You know, birds of a feather flock together, folks. Perverted minds think alike. Number seven, he's for aborting a child in the womb. Let's be clear. God is against unrighteous murder of any kind. And so am I. Number eight, he expressed the desire to grow marijuana on the church property to draw young black men to church. Folks, this is foolishness. It is absolute foolishness. 
But let me show the video so that you can hear these things coming out of uh, Pastor Jamal Bryant's mouth himself. Let me share this video footage with my audience and we'll come back and discuss it. All right. At the risk of being heretical tonight, might I suggest to you that um, 85% of Jesus' life, he was out of order. Eighty-five percent of his life, he was doing what he was not called to do. God, y'all done got quiet. For eighty-five percent of his life, he was not flowing in his God-given function. Eighty-five percent of his life, he is doing what his natural father wanted. but it did not line up with his divine DNA. For 85% of his life, and he's anointed, he's called, he's chosen, and he's wrong. Every brother, would you tap another brother and say, I should have listened to her. God help me, old saints, y'all forgive me, but I gotta tell you, these hoes ain't loyal. Pastor Jamal Bryant. I'm looking for people that smell like weeds. <laughs> no, 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 really, it is. <laughs> New Birth is the largest land-owning black church in America. Wow. And so my position to my deacons is why aren't we not raising cannabis? I'll be able to bring in black males they're able to do it legally. Mm. I'm teaching them farming. Oh my God. I'm helping them to enhance the ecosystem. Uh, th th this is the kind of conversation. So if the guy, black boy in Bankhead said, they growing weed at the church, where do I join? Church, not saying nothing about Brittany Garner. Right. Right? Yeah. They stuck in the same place. Because um, she's black and she's gay. Okay. And what I said, I was in South Carolina two days ago. I said, I don't want to hear that argument. You can't support uh, Black Lives Matter because they were pushed by the LBGT community. Then why did you support the March on Washington? Mm. March on Washington was not Dr. King's march. He was a speaker. The organizer was a black man. And y'all got on all these buses from all these Baptist churches and supported it. Let's do the exact same thing. And so I think that the black church has got to have a real come to Jesus meeting mm -hmm. uh, and get into the 21st century. I got up, Rashawn, after the Supreme Court uh, ruling about uh, that new birth and me are pro-choice because Jesus is. Right. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you decide to let me in, that's pro-choice. Huh. God in the Garden of Eden said to Adam and Eve, all of these trees are available to you. I want you to pick those. I'm not putting this other tree behind barbed wire and the ADT alarm. Don't eat it, but that's your choice. Yes. Christianity in and to itself is pro-choice. But we don't say anything because a lot of black churches are white evangelicals in Germany. Jamal Bryan is my cousin, a false prophet. Don't believe in a baptism in the name of Jesus Christ at all. He won't tell nobody he related to me. Mm -mm. So I tell him. I, I, think, I think that's amazing. Uh, and a lot of people think that that's novel and y'all church people are going to have a heart attack. Monique is from Baltimore with me. So I believed in open marriage. I just forgot to tell my ex-wife about it. <laughs> so it, 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 it didn't go well. <laughs> but but exactly. I think that the, but the key you, is... Have you had that conversation? The key is that conversation. Mm -hmm. But the biblical part I've got to ask yes. uh, is not as entertainers, but as believers, mm -hmm. how do you find that balance that we say that the bedroom is sacred mm -hmm. for the two of you? Who am I to tell her what she can and cannot do? Uh, Pastor Jamal Bryant, and uh, he went and visited a LBGTQ affirming church. 
That is an oxymoronic statement, if there has ever been one. There are no teachings of Christ that endorses homosexuality, lesbianism, transgenderism, or any of those things. So then how can you be an LBGTQ church? So he goes to that gathering place. Uh, he said that he wanted to apologize on behalf of pastors who may have hurt them. I am here because the black church owes this community an apology. And uh, I wanted to come tonight uh, not just uh, as pastor of New Birth. I wanted to come for pastors who have hurt you. Let's start right there and see enough. The, the, the zebra colored coat and the next guy, I guess they married to each other. And so he's down there apologizing on behalf of pastors. You do not speak for me. You do not speak for us. There's something wrong with Atlanta. Every, it just, Lord have mercy. It just, we got to pray against that principality that's set over that city. And, uh, and you young men, I hope you saw how them young sister boys were shouting. So you know not to shout like that. Lest I come and correct you in the middle of your dance. Hold it. Let me show you how to shout right. Y'all don't like me today. Um, not only that, but show where he teaches another gospel. Stuff that was applicable for your grandmother means nothing to you. For me to tell 16-year-olds to be celibate is one thing. A 37-year-old who's used to getting some, I need a different kind of gospel. All right, stop so the right church there. Ain't Just stop right there. Now, right there. For the first lie he told was that what was true for one generation is not true for another. When the Bible says God's truth endureth to all generations. Number one. God's truth. Psalms 100 and Verse 5, the last clause, endureth to all generations. So what was true yesterday is true today. Now, I do give him credit for telling the truth in it. He said, that's another gospel. Now, let's give, let's give him a hand because that's true. Because that ain't the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's some made up junk. And Paul said that, that if they come any other way with another gospel, Paul said it is not the gospel. The, the true gospel teaches everybody to live holy, to live right. He has a tremendous con, uh, congregation who amens all that stuff. Same preacher who said his church uh, will grow, will use the property to grow cannabis. These things we can't unite under. You can't say, well, he's a brother and I'm a brother, man. The two brothers all to work together. Come with brothers, brother. Come on, brother, man. Brother, nothing. We're not brothers in that regard. No, no, ain't no kin to you at all. We ain't got nothing in common. Not at all. Because that's not right. This is the same preacher one Sunday while preaching in favor of a woman's right to choose. On that same Sunday, they had a, ch a christening, a child dedicating service, yep. and people brought their children up to be dedicated by that preacher. But the preacher just got through preaching in favor of abortion. You gonna let those hands dedicate your child? See, it's things like this that you don't want to have to deal with. But here's the problem for those who are not pastors. 
And I don't know what it's like when it comes to you. But when you are a leader, for the leader to say nothing, indifference is an endorsement. The assumption is if we don't say anything about it, then we go along with it. Well, I don't want nobody to misunderstand, misunderstand Patrick Wooden. Patrick Wooden doesn't go along with that at all because it's not Bible. Even though God is calling for unity in the body, but you can't just have unity. It has to be unity built on truth. Wow, wow, man. What do you think about that, man? Just to hear this guy say these things from his own mouth and everybody that's watching this video, they're able to hear these words that are coming out of his mouth. It's not just me making up stories. All right, bro, let's chop it up. What are your thoughts about these things that uh, Jamal Bryant has said? Well, first of all, I want to give the opening statements of what I think, and then we're going to go, I'm sure we're going to tackle these issues one by one. That's how I would like to do it. But uh, I really didn't know how you wanted to tackle this, whether you wanted to break them down one by one. But first, let me just say this. Let me start here. In the Bible, God proclaims in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, he says, but understand this, that in the last days, dangerous times of great stress and trouble will come. For the people will be lovers of themselves, narcissistic and self-focused, lovers of money, boastful and arrogant. And, it, and, and then it goes on to list a bevy of other issues that we see that we are facing and witnessing now, including the fact that not only will false doc, uh, prophets teach their own philosophies and ideologies, but also there will be masses of people who seek and search out such teachings because it's, it tickles their ears. Um, it's what they mm. want to hear. It makes them feel good and allows them to continue to live sinful lives. Um, so I wanted to say that first. And so not only is Jamal Bryan under fire today, on the hot seat but also the ignorant and unlearned people who feed on this nonsense because in the end ignorance will not be an excuse let me say that for the people in the back ignorance will not be an excuse um because god says to study for thyself you'll hear that from me often because one of my things is pet peeves is i don't think enough people study for themselves so i wanted to start there and then i wanted us to have a dialogue concerning each of these foolish statements that he's done said and he seemingly gets away with so we can break them down one by one brother and i'm ready to have this dialogue okay well uh let's go back to number one uh number one he curses and uses profanity uh, in Come the on. church, referencing. Uh, say again. No, I, I was just going uh, to go ahead. All okay. right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he curses and uses profanity uh, in the pulpit, uh, referencing uh, R&B singer Chris Brown uh, by saying these hoes ain't loyal, and a lot of people in the church just started jumping up, clapping, and laughing, and so. It, it, it just shows me that his congregation is used to him saying uh, idiotic uh, statements as such, and they are pretty much in agreement. It's like they're coming to be entertained instead of coming uh, to be filled with a word from the Lord. So what are your thoughts? These are people that once again fall into the category. They have been trained and conditioned to follow a man. They have been trained and conditioned to follow a man they're not studied they're not learned for themselves they have no desire to learn from themselves so what we have is a culture of people who feel like they're taking the pulpit feeling like they have to help god out and the devil disguises this by saying he's bridging the gap between the old and the new trying to make the word of god relevant for the new culture when god needs no help i would argue that uh more revelation has been revealed as time has went on and so our older forefathers and our and the, and the ancestors that came before for us had less understanding about the pure unadulterated word than we do now so people it's a trick of the enemy to have these teachers uh to be in love with the way that they teach we be in love with their necromancy and god's giving them a gift to speak and they're using it for their father satan in order to say and they'll disguise it under this well i'm trying to be more relatable i'm gonna i'm gonna use some of this secular music and secular sayings in order because all i'm trying to do is help god out well god's word needs no help it stands alone. God is God alone. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. So what we're dealing with exactly. uh, is, a, is a culture of people who feel like they're in love with what they do. They're in love with the idea of who they are and self-focused. So that's what we're dealing with here, really, when we talk about him cursing and using secular Exactly. Music. 
Yeah, and also the, the scripture says, uh, I'm not sure of which scripture, but it, it mentions about the use of profanity. It says not to do so. And him even using it as an example in the pulpit is out of line, is out of order. And so now out of order is going to lead me to this uh, second point where he said that Jesus Christ was wrong 85 percent of uh, his ministry and he was out of order. Now, he said this in the presence uh, in the actual church of Pastor Marvin Sapp, who's also a popular gospel singer. Uh, now, Pastor Sapp didn't say a word. He was sitting back, uh, read back in his seat with his uh, uh, religious garb on. And he did not cut the mic off. He did not uh, get up and, and chastise uh, uh, Jamal Bryant. And so I have a problem with him even allowing this to continue because those statements that he made, somebody in that congregation, man, actually took that to heart and said, well, hey, Jesus wasn't perfect. So why would I serve a, 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 a Christ that's not perfect? Because you have to be perfect in order to die for the sins of humanity. And let me say this, folks, Jesus Christ was perfect. He was born perfect. Even when he was a child, he was perfect. He is without sin. The scripture says Jesus was tempted in all points known to man, but yet without sin. He had to be perfect in order to die for the sins of all humanity. And so Jamal Bryant uh, was blaspheming when he made this statement. What are your thoughts on that, my brother? First of all, that was a perfect segue into that next question. So you couldn't have done any better, my brother. And I, and also what I wanted to point out was the fact that that's the perfect example of us having just enough Holy Ghost to sit in a religious ceremony, but not enough Holy Ghost to stand up and, and stand up for the unrighteous words that that brother spoke that day when he proclaimed that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was out of order 85% of his life. I'm going to give you three examples real quick of why that was totally wrong one when jesus was 12 and they had lost jesus his parents joseph and mary had actually lost jesus and he was found in the temple jesus actually had a burning desire to be about his father's business at the age of 12 but he had to be under the yeah. ruleship of his parents and god does not break his law for anybody not even jesus he said you got to obey your parents it was not his time to be doing what he felt like he needed to be doing at that time it wasn't his time so how's he out of order Second example I want to give you he was is when, right, and when Mary found him in the, in the wedding and they ran out of wine and they went to Jesus and said, hey, can you turn water into wine? What does he say? He said, what have that to do with me, woman? It is not yet my time to be performing these miracles yet. So Jesus is letting you know, hey, it's not my time. We all have a time and a season to be doing what God has for us. And it's really not in our control. We just got to get in line with what God has for us. So that's the second reason uh, that he's out of order. He, Jamal Bryant, is out of order for saying that. The last and final final reason I can show you that he was out of order is because when Jesus dealt with the man of legions of the 2000 legions inside of him when Jesus approached this man the demon spoke out to him and said what are you doing here have you come to torture us before your time so even the spiritual mm -hmm. realm and the demons have a concept of this thing called time and it wasn't their time yet so they trembled in fear when they came upon Jesus because they said what are you doing here have you come to torture us before your time so, so in yeah. essence, what I'm yeah, saying is, well, the demons. How can, how can go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. What I was gonna say is, so how can Jesus hey. be out of order? So you're preaching a false doctrine and giving people a misrepresentation of who Christ was and that we know that the devil is a mighty deceptor. So you want to give people this false uh, this false narrative that it's OK to be unperfect when God says none of us are perfect, but we ought to be like Paul said and strive toward the mark of perfection. That's your job. And so when you give a person a way out or an excuse or to look at our God as imperfect, you're out of order. That's right. The, the, the scripture said that the demons fear and tremble and people must realize that the demons were created beings by God before they were kicked out of heaven. They were uh, under the uh, authority of God. And so that's why the devil can quote scripture and misquote scripture. Actually, he 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 adds a little truth with a lot of lie, but a little truth with a lot of lie still makes it a, a, a complete lie. And so therefore, the devil knows how to quote scriptures, but he doesn't have revelation knowledge. He doesn't have the Holy Spirit dwelling within him, uh, who is the spirit of all truth. So the devil uses uh, uh, partial scriptures to mislead people uh, and, and to make the blind folks even more blinder. But 
uh, Mary uh, knew the powers that Jesus had, and therefore she asked him to turn this water into wine. She knew what her, who her son was. You know, she knew his power. She knew, but but Jesus told her, "It's not yet my time to do these things." And so there's a, a time and a place for everything to happen. And Jesus uh, was not being out of order uh, by telling his mother that it's not my time yet. I must be about my father's business. OK, number three, uh, he says uh, Jamal Bryant, while being interviewed or interviewing uh, comedian Monique, he said that he believes in open marriage, but his wife uh, didn't get the memo. Uh, the wife that he divorced in, I think, 2007. So uh, open marriages uh, are against God. God said a man should have one woman as his wife and her breast should satisfy him. And so to be in an open marriage means that you are married to a woman uh, and a woman is married to a man and you're having outside relationships. Well, that's adultery, you know, and, and apparently uh, him saying that he believed in open marriages, he actually uh, actually lived that out in his life and it uh, led to his divorce of his wife. So what do you think about that? Well, first of all, I think we as people are in a fallen state and we have a tendency to make God in our image instead of being made in his image as the Bible proclaims. We want to perform God in our image and our ideas and to fulfill the lusts of our flesh. So that's the first thing I think about it because uh, w because of our desire, it says, uh, don't blame God for tempting you for him. He himself cannot be tempted and man is tempted by the desires of his own flesh and after that sin comes death. So when we look at this, let's look at the statement. He said he, he believes in open marriage. He believes. He letting you know right now this is his belief. So now where the problem comes in, you have a congregation of followers who have been trained and conditioned to follow this man and his beliefs. And what's going to happen is it says that the that hell is enlarging itself every day. Hell's enlarging itself every day. When you're sitting here preaching to a mass of people who are following you and not following the head Jesus Christ and following what you believe. And see, they're going to be drawn by this, like we said earlier in the message, uh, in this podcast, that they're going to be drawn to this because somebody in that congregation wants to believe that way. They want to feel that way. They got a lust just like you, Jamal Bryan. And by you being their spiritual leader, the contamination, the poison that you're giving these few and the fuel to the fire to, for them to feed their flesh is downright just egregious. You know what I'm saying? For lack of better verbiage, that's egregious and it should be dealt with. And I think that's what we're doing here today. And, and uh, scripture says, Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. So if you don't study the word of God, you're not going to know uh, what the <laughs> example of Christ is because you're going to follow the pastor because you're thinking, well, he's a man of God called by God to preach the message. And so if he says that he's he's cool with open marriages, maybe God gave him a new revelation. Well, there are no new revelations. God's word has already been sealed. The canon of scriptures has already been sealed. And so. Therefore, if a pastor, whether male or female or any teacher or anybody that tells you anything that's contrary to the word of God, uh, you got to discount that. And in order for you to know if that is the word of God, you're going to have to study to show thyself approved. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly divided the word, dividing the word of truth. That's 2 Timothy 2.15. All right. Uh, to number four, Jamal Bryan apologizes to the LGBTQ community for black pastors' insensitivities. Uh, they may have hurt the LGBTQ community. What are your thoughts on that? First of all, uh, going back to the last statement before I answer this one, what do I would like to know in the comments, what do people think a wolf in sheep's clothing is? You know what I'm saying? You made a statement that, hey, they looking at him as a man of God. But this is where you, me and you talked uh, a day or two before, and, and we said having the spirit of God discernment is very important. And if you don't study and become knowledgeable on what God describes as a wolf in sheep clothing, this is exactly what this man is. He's dressed apart. He's reading from the word. But we all know that the, the enemy knows the scripture more than some of us saints. So when we look at this, you what what is the definition of a wolf in sheep's clothing? It's one who can sneak amongst you, look just like you, but yet he has a total <laughs> detriment to, to the goal of what we're doing. So on to this next question, sir. When you said he's oh, a hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. Hold on. The tear amongst the weak. OK, that's what the Bible say. The, the tear of the unbelievers amongst uh, the weak, which are the Christians. All Christians are not studied on the same level. I think one of the biggest uh, downfalls in the body of Christ is discernment. Christians, the ability to discern the difference between truth and error. 
because as a study man of God, no way in the world would I have sat inside of that church when this guy said 85 percent of uh, uh, Jesus's life. Uh, he was out of order. I would have gotten up and walked out and would not have even raised that one finger. You know how in some black churches raise the one finger when you go out? I would have walked up out of that church. Uh, number two, if he would have said anything uh, using profanity uh, uh, in the pulpit, I would have walked out. Number one, knowing his history coming from uh, the church that he preached in uh, Baltimore, I would have never gone to the church. And so uh, now what's your response on this uh Jamal Bryant going to a LGBT uh, church in Atlanta where the pastor, the, the man pastor is married to another man. You see what I'm saying? So this guy was sitting on the stage apologizing to the LGBT community on behalf of black pastors in sensitivities to the LGBT community. Now, let me let me give you my assessment on that. Go ahead. I love everybody. As a, I love everybody as a Christian man. I don't hate anyone. I can't hate you and say I love God because the Bible says how can you say you love me what you've never seen but you hate your fellow uh, a brother is not talking about a Christian but you hate your fellow uh, brethren human beings that you see every day I don't hate anybody I hate your lifestyle God hates your lifestyle God hates sin all sin whether you are a fornicator whether you are a homosexual, whether you are a man sleeping with a woman outside of marriage, God hates that. It's still sin. And so God looked at all sin uh, as equal. But this sin of homosexuality, God says it's what? What, what did he say it is, my brother? He said it's, it's what? An, it's an, an abomination. abomination. Right. It's an abomination. And so it's against nature. You see what I'm saying? In, 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 uh, in Leviticus, in Romans 1, 26 through 27, God says that a woman leaves her, her natural uh, affections for a man and turn her affections over to a woman. And the man does the same thing. And so uh, what are your thoughts of him apologizing to uh, this community based on other pastors? What do you think? It's the same thing I feel about all these false uh, doctor, uh, false preachers who get on these talk shows like Oprah or Dr. Phil or any of these worldly podcasts and, and end up switching up or flipping up. You cannot be a friend to the world and remain a friend of God. God has a natural right. enmity between his people and the world. So you cannot, there's no way you could be a friend of the world or want the popularity or the access to the monies that the world has, which we know that these many of these people proclaiming to love God do. Um, they fall in love with the, being a friend to the world and eventually you're going to get rope a and you're going to get trapped up into saying something <laughs> that you know goes contrary. And it happens all the time. We know this. So I, I have no desire as a man of God to be friendly with any. If you invite me on your show, uh, Dr. Phil or Oprah, guess what? I'm not switching up. You're going to have to stop the show and and, and do something else because I'm not going to switch up from what I believe. God calls it an abomination. And I want to tell people what an yeah. abomination is. It's just like what you described. If I create a toaster to make toast and it starts making Kool-Aid, I'm going to say that's an abomination. It's not what I created that thing to do. So that's what he said. I created a man to be with woman. I created a woman to be with a man, vice versa. And so anything contrary to that is what he calls an abomination. And I believe it makes God sorrowful and sick that we take something that he meant to be pleasurable, the relationship between a man and a woman, something that he created so pure and so natural, and we pervert it. Once again, we're trying to uh, create God in our image. When the LGBTQIA plus makes this statement that it's about love and we ought to be able to love who we want to, well, guess what? Love isn't perverted. You can love everybody. God requires us to love, but this is an issue of who you want to lay down with at night. And that's two totally separate things. Well, you know what? When you love someone truly as God loves, you tell them the truth. You don't compromise your integrity to tell them a lie just so that they don't uh, drop you from their friends list or they don't uh, hire you at their company. You have to tell them the truth. The Bible says preach the word in season and out of season. So that's what the scripture means. Whether they like it or not, you still tell the truth. Because the Bible says all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall be persecuted. The thing is, with some of these sissified Christians today, they don't want to say anything. They want to be silent and they want to fit in. Well, I'm not that type of Christian. I'm a bold believer for Christ and I'm going to stand up for the word of God without fear. Without fear, because the Bible says that if you that, that the world hated Jesus first. So if you stand up uh, for righteousness, the world is going to hate you. Why would the world 
crucify a perfect man who had never sinned because the world does not want to be called out about their sins. They want to live a lifestyle of sin and don't want you to say anything. And some of that world is in these pastors and is in these pulpits because they don't want to be called out. So let me go to number five, my brother. Uh, number five, it says, uh, uh, Pastor, uh, no, I ain't gonna, I'm not even call this guy a pastor, so called pastor, uh, Jamal Bryan. He says that there should be another gospel for older men who want to have sex and not wait until marriage. Now, when, 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 he says there should be another gospel when God clearly says in Galatians 1 that if I, this is what Paul says, if I or any man, or any angel uh, come down and preach another gospel uh, than what we've already preached, the Bible says, let that man be accursed. You know what I'm saying? A curse means damned to hell. It, 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 it doesn't mean that you're going to go to heaven. It means you are damned because there's only one gospel. And so what do you think about this guy, man, trying to uh, make other avenues uh, for sin, for people who want to live in sin, just so he can bring them to his church? What do you think about that? Man, let me tell you something, man. The Bible calls Satan cunning and crafty and slick. And he can only be cunning and crafty and slick to those who don't put on the full armor of God, that those that ain't prepared for this battle that we say we in. He can only be cunning and crafty and slick because when he t tempted Jesus up on that mountain at all points, like you said, and gave him all these points, Jesus was ready with an answer. Jesus was studied, learned, and prepared for what Satan had for him, and many of us aren't. So when we look at what he's done in that pool pit, he's literally telling you that he's going to come up with another gospel and give you another gospel. Right there alone, you're supposed to say, oh, wait, wait a minute, I'm checking out right here. You, you messed up because there's one God, one truth, and one gospel that he told us to teach. There's no di uh, variation. There's no straying away. He, he actually tells us, don't you add to it and don't you take away. That's right. So when he makes the statement well, that hey, I need a new gospel, when he makes that statement and say, I need a new gospel, I say, well, you need a new congregation to preach to, too, because this ain't the one. Exactly. Well, he said if you add or take away, what did he say was going to happen? And if we add or take away, I, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss right there. What, what did he say? If you, you, if you, if you, if you add, add or take, if, 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 well, you're going to be cursed. You know what I'm saying? Oh, if, you, if you add, yeah, yeah, judgment is going to come upon you for adding or taking away from his word. And that's what a lot of right, pastors right. are doing. When you, compromise, when you compromise the word of God, you're actually adding your words or your thoughts to the to the scripture. You can't right. do that. God does not allow you to do that. And so you no longer become, you're no longer a spokesman if you ever were. You're no longer a spokesman and, 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 and not, you don't represent God anymore whenever you do that. So uh just wanted to add that point right there. Now, uh Jamal Bryan says he's evolved on homosexuality and same-sex marriage. What do you think mm. about that? Let me tell you something. I'm going to use a statement that I've already said. God's the same God he was before, today, and always, forever will be. We got a we got a culture that's in love with evolving, evolving to su such points that we say that I'm a man today and I want to evolve into a woman. I'm a woman today. God made me a woman, but I feel like I want to be a man. I'm evolving into the true self. Listen, let me tell you something. Satan is tricking these uh, people at a high alarming rate and the, they don't realize we spoke about the Antichrist once before in the discussion. The spirit and the foundation for the Antichrist is being laid as we speak. So we're not talking about the physical embodiment of the Antichrist, but we're laying the foundation for the embodiment of this Antichrist, which the world will be in love with this person or this entity when they come. How do you think they're going to be? The Bible says people, men and women are going to love him. They're going to think he's just like Jesus. He's going to be performing signs and miracles. How will people be deceived? Well, this is how they'll be deceived. When you're in love with the world, when you're in love with this concept of evolving, when you're in love with this, guess what? You're going to be in love with that Antichrist because you're following that same role, that same narrative that we are evolving. And all of that is is a big exactly. middle finger to the creator. And one more point on this. <laughs> I cannot stand to hear these new commercials they got out now if you were assigned female at birth, if you were assigned male at birth. You weren't assigned anything. You came out with male genitalia, you were male. You came out with a, a female right. genitalia, you were female. So. No male assigned you these genders. God assigned you this. God made you this. So 
People can't see the deception that's going on around them every day. And the reason they can't be because they're spiritually blind, they're spiritually lame, they're spiritually deaf. And this is what Jesus came and he made us representatives when we received the Holy Spirit to be able to do this and uh, heal those blind eyes. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, I can see why Jamal Bryant uh, has evolved and evolving on homosexuality because his mentor, T.D. Jakes, has done the same thing about seven or eight years ago. And I'll do a video on him uh, next. Uh, this will uh, the video I do on T.D. Jakes will be number number two. Uh, listen, birds of a feather flock together, man. You know, uh, you know, my, my thing is, is that perverted minds do think alike. Sure. Now, number seven, uh, he's for aborting the child in the womb. What do you think about that? A uh, scripture in the Bible or aborting a child that I like to use is, but whoso, who, whosoever shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me, it would be better for him that to tie a millstone were hanged around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. The enemy has an objective to get rid of God's people. And so people who are under the influence of the spirit of this Antichrist, who are knowingly and unknowingly uh, agreeing with abortion, whom God decided whether or not that life gets here or not, but we're making it our decision. Hey, well, it's her body, her choice. The earth is God's and the fullness thereof. There's nothing on this earth that belongs to us. Even your body, ma'am. Even her body, sir. It's not our decision on whether or not a woman is to have that child or not. So it would be better for you to tie a millstone around your neck and to be drowned in the bo bottom depths of the sea. And so what we don't understand is we want to say that we have that choice on whether or not to bring that baby into this world. Well, no, you don't have that choice. That's God. The earth is God's and the fullness thereof. That's his decision and, and there i'm gonna say this last point there are those who say well what about insinuating circumstances where the, the mother may have been assaulted you know i don't want to say that word on youtube essayed or or sexually assaulted um well let me tell you this you have to look at that as a blessing from god too if god has decided to bring a baby out of that then hey there's several options you can get that baby up for adoption you can do anything hey if you want to put it in the river like they did moses just don't kill it <laughs> you know what i'm saying but what i'm saying is i'm saying it's not your decision uh, on whether or not to do that. If it comes down to life or death where they say, hey, the mother um, the mother may lose her life, then let that be a God decision as well on, on who lives or dies because the earth is uh, his and the fullness thereof. So when, well, when we you say, know, when we say, go ahead. No, go ahead. So when we say this topic of abortion, you know, that's trying to be a friend of the world. I have no desire yeah. to plead. To, I have no political agenda. I'm not running for president. I'm not trying to be a senator. I'm on God's team. So when you see people with political agendas, with the agendas to raise the membership and increase their membership in the church, you're going to see pastors increasingly become a part of the front line when it comes to supporting these agendas. Yeah, I don't I don't support agenda. Uh, as you just stated, uh, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. Uh, I'm, I'm a God man You know, I'm an only God man And so whatever the scripture says That's what I adhere to And that's what I believe uh, God is the creator of life uh, God says Before you were born I knew you in your uh, I, Before you were born I knew you in your mother's womb You know, and so God is the creator of life And man uh, can't take that life away And a woman uh, Who aborts her child Is, is a murderer you know, and anybody that assists her in doing so is a murderer and God will hold them accountable. Now, I believe if a woman's life is in jeopardy, if she has a child, then I believe the woman's life should be spared. Uh, but outside of that, even in incest or, or rape, uh, that's still a child. That's still a human life. You don't have to take care of that child. You can give that child away for adoption. God did not give you the right to afford the child. All right, uh, we're gonna move to number eight. Uh, Jamal Bryan expressed the desire to grow marijuana on the church property to draw young black men to church. What do you say about that?
It's sick. It's just sick, the perverted mind that this man and the extremes he is willing to go to to try to be a friend to the world and disguise it under the veil that he's doing God's work. It's just sick, man. You can definitely tell that this man is an agent of Satan. He has been he is he is letting Satan work through him and live in him. And so you said something a while ago, that scripture in Jeremiah where God says, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. That's very important. Because let me tell y'all something. Um, when God says that word to know it's very it's very very intimate to know you so and, and you got to understand when he says i knew you before i formed you in the in the womb and i had i know the thoughts that i had for you i know the dreams that i had for you when we get in this world we become very contaminated we become contaminated mm -hmm. and poisoned this is why he said there will be many that stand before me and say lord lord and he will say depart from me because i never knew you what he's saying in all you never got rid of none of this contamination i knew you when i formed you in the womb but who you became when you got in this world i don't know this person so when we look at this jamal Bryan may have started yeah. off innocent and started off a certain way but he's definitely contaminated now when it comes to him talking about growing marijuana in a church and of course you're going to appeal to some uh savage somebody out in the street some uh bag a bond yeah. that just wants to come and here you're going to appeal to that but you have no concern with god's body no concern with the salvation of the people you teach over and you ought to be sat down immediately listen i i can tell the people of uh the church that he pastors uh in lithonia georgia if you want to send him a wake-up call don't show up for church services on Sunday because you are sitting up under a man who is controlled and, and, and uh, a man who is actually uh, a follower of Satan himself because the things that are coming out of his mouth are not godly at all. You know, you're being deceived. It sort of reminds me of the People's Church uh, where Jim Jones uh was the pastor of a church in San Francisco in the mid 70s. And Jim Jones was a homosexual. He was having sex with uh, men in the church, having sex with uh, women in the church. He was also married, so which means he was an adulterer. Uh, he would actually beat little kids in the church in front of all of the congregation, you know, like whip them and spank them. Uh, that's a job for their parents to do. And he had a revelation, a new revelation. Now, I told you guys, there's no such thing as a new revelation. He had a new revelation that Jesus spoke to him and, and, and wanted him to take the church to Guyana to, uh, to be ready for the return of Jesus Christ. Number one, if you studied the word of God and you were up in that church, you would know that that was false. You don't have to go to another land uh, to be raptured. You see what I'm saying? You, you're going to be raptured if you are a believer wherever you are uh, in, in the earth. And so they went there. And almost eight, almost 900 people were killed because he gave them poison Kool-Aid. He wasn't going to allow them to come back to the United States. He killed a sitting congressman. Uh, I think you had two or three people escaped uh, from that uh, situation over in Guyana. But this, these are people who were following a false prophet. And if they would have studied to show themselves approved, that never would have happened. So it's very vital, very important, uh, Christians, that you study the word of God. If you were in school and your teacher gave you the test and gave you the answers, which the Bible is the answers, to study so that you could pass the test. If you didn't study the, the, the answer sheet, you would fail that test. And a lot of Christians are failing the test because they fail to study the word of God. Hey, man, let me share this video footage with my audience and uh, we'll come back and continue this discussion. Wow, wow, wow. All right, bro, let's chop it up. Uh, now, we've already discussed the, the, the eight questions, uh, not the eight questions, hold on, let me do that again. All right, bro, let's chop it up. We've already discussed the uh, comments that Jamal Bryant has made, uh, the acid iron comments that he's made. Now, what are your thoughts? Uh, why do you think so many people are so blinded by this charlatan that they don't leave New Birth Church in Lithonia, Georgia? Well, one, the, my main reason that I've stated throughout this podcast is they're ignorant and unlearned and refuse to pick up the word for themselves. They've been trained and conditioned to, and we do this a lot, especially in the black church. We lift our pastors on high 
and idolize our pastors. And I hate to say it like that, but it, the truth is the truth. We lift the pastor on high and we idolize these men as if they are the end all and be all. We all know that if we're real believers, that Christ is the head. And all of us are the members of yeah. the body, meaning the, the pastor is no more important than that deacon, than that usher, than the uh, conservative member, the, the regular member that sits on. Nobody's more important. You got 10 fingers and you don't want to lose either one of them fingers. Even though you got 10, you don't want to end up, wake <laughs> up tomorrow with nine. Everybody's important. God is the head. Christ is the head. So with that being said, sometimes we, we try to make our pastor the head of the, of the church. And when we do this, when we depend and lean on in that codependent relationship of if it don't come from pastor, it don't mean nothing. When we fall into that category, we are subject to be trained and conditioned to follow a man. So what these people have done is put themselves in, in, in such a condition that their ears are not are not connected to their hearts or the or the word of God is not in their hearts to the point to where when they hear something that isn't right, they're not even processing it. They're just saying amen out of habit. They're not even understanding yeah. and they don't hear they don't know when they're hearing something wrong. Hey man, they're just shouting amen to say it. <laughs> You're absolutely correct, man. Uh they're creatures of habit. Well, let me let me say this to uh the, the, the members of New Birth Church or any other church throughout the United States or the world that may see this message. Every pastor that preaches the word of God is not going to heaven. Now, some people may say, whoa, what do you mean uh, pastors are not going to heaven? They're men and women of God, aren't they? Every man or woman that preaches or teaches the word of God or every person who's not a pastor that uh, the, 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 the name of Jesus is on their lips, but their hearts are far from God, are not entering the kingdom of heaven. And I'm going to give you uh, a couple of scriptures. In, in Matthew 23 and 13, it says, but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Preachers, apostles, so-called prophets, teachers. It says, you, Jesus said, you hypocrites, for you shut the kingdom of heaven against men, for you won't enter and neither will they. Jesus said, you won't enter into heaven and neither will they. Now, why is that? Because you were a false prophet preaching another gospel like Jamal Bryant. Your motives were not centered on on, on saving souls, but sit it on uh, fattening your pockets. You know, the Bible says uh, they have fallen away from the faith because of filthy lucre. They wanted to get rich. And so their mindset was not about pleasing God, but it was about uh, 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 getting more wealth for themselves. Uh, the scripture also said in Matthew 23 and 15, it says, War unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte. A proselyte is a uh, somebody you're trying to convert. And when he is made or when she is made, you make him twofold the child of hell than yourselves. Jesus is saying that you travel over the seas, all over the country, all over the world to make converts, to bring into your church, to hear another gospel, to hear words that you made up and not words from my Bible, from my word, from scripture. And these people are becoming twice the children of hell as you. That means that you're not going to heaven. That pastor is lost. And so if your pastor is saying things that are not biblical, why don't you do like the people in Berea uh, in Acts 17, where after Paul, Apostle Paul finished preaching, they went home and they searched the scriptures. And back then, people, there were no chapter and verses. So these people had to literally go through the entire scripture to see what Paul uh, was preaching was correct. And when they realized it was correct, then they said, amen. You don't say amen blindly. When you say amen, you're basically saying, I agree with what you said, Pastor. You can't do that. You can't do that. Hey, can, can, so, can, I, add, can, can, I, can, I, can I add one thing to that and piggyback yeah. off that real quick? This is where people are so blind. This is where people are so blind. In that scripture where it says, how can you hear without a preacher? How can he preach unless he be sent by God? A lot of times we don't understand a lot of these preachers haven't been sent by God, number one. 
Number two, yes, when, if you're ignorant and unlearned and have not ever heard of God and don't have a relationship with God, it's going to take a man or a woman of God that's been sent by God to open your eyes. But after that, it's up to you and your walk with God. There are plenty of people that Jesus had a, 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 a contact with or uh, their first uh, link with Jesus in the Bible. And after that, he told them to go on sin no more. He didn't say, come follow me. Come lay up under me. You got to follow me everywhere I go. You got to be in my congregation every Sunday and every Wednesday to get this. Now, he said, look, I, you've been healed. You've been delivered and set free. Now, go and sin no more. Otherwise, go and be with God for yourself. Have an experience with God for yourself. We got too many pastors that they're not concerned with you being saved. They're more concerned with you coming every Sunday, every Wednesday, sitting your butt on that pew, forever learning, never coming to the knowledge of a truth. You're forever a student under them yeah. because guess what? You can't get it if you don't get it from me. I am the man of God. I am to be held reverent. <laughs> so if it don't come from me, it's something wrong with it. And this is what we've been contrained and conditioned. I keep telling people, I'm going to shut up in a second. If anybody should have started a mega church, it should have been Jesus. When he fed those 5,000 uh, men and women, not including the children, not including women and children, he could have said, hey, this I'm stopping right here. I'm not going to walk nowhere else. We're going to set up a mega church right here and everybody got to come here to hear. Jesus was not about that life. He was about going to here and to and here and fro. And, and anybody who wanted to hear it can hear it. But so many times we want a codependent relationship where that pastor feels like you need him and you want to feel like I need you man of God when you're not out here doing what God told you to do amen amen well you know what man uh it hurts it hurts me it hurts my soul man to see see how many blind people are in these churches today and like you said man they look at the pastor as being their sole source when the word of God is their source and, and, and if they truly was to study the word of God, uh, there is no way that the, the body of Christ, the true body of Christ, would be in the condition uh, that it is right now. Uh, Anthony, uh, what does the Bible say about anyone preaching another gospel? Since Jamal Bryan says that uh, he wants to uh, come up with another gospel uh, to give people an avenue to sin, uh, what does the Bible uh, say about that? First of all, they're a false prophet. They will be cursed for doing this. Um, it, it says a lot of things about people who do this. And we are to be aware of these people, number one. We got to be aware of these people. It says that don't listen to these people that do this. So that's why I said Jamal Brown ain't the only one on the hot seat. It's the people responsible for listening and eating this trash, you know? Yeah. The, the scripture said test, test those, test the spirit by the spirit, right? So in order for you to test the spirit by the spirit, yeah, you in order for you to do that, you have to study the God, God's word. Because if you don't study God's word, you have no revelation knowledge. The Holy Spirit only brings to your uh, uh, memory what you have studied, what you have learned. And so, again, Christians are being duped time and time again. You know, the scripture says in uh, uh, Galatians 1 and 8. It says, uh, but though we or an angel, and I mentioned this earlier uh, in the in the show, uh, uh, if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than what you've already heard, it said, let that person be accursed. Don't listen to it. But in order for you to be able to discern if what this person is saying, you have to study God's word. And until you study God's word, you're going to continue to be manipulated you're going to continue to be a failure even though you are eternally secured in heaven as a true christian you have failed on earth because you failed to study god's word and you have failed to protect uh, uh the honor of god and you you have also uh failed to be able to uh uh it's, it's called apologetics to be able to defend the gospel you know you can't defend the gospel if you don't know no gospel you know what I'm saying? If you're only repeating words that your past pastor is saying, and you're not you're not studying to show that's proof. You can't defend the gospel. So uh, now, uh, a lot of pastors, uh, Anthony, they use that scripture, "Touch not my anointing, and do my prophets no harm." A lot of pastors use that out of context because they don't want to be called out for their uh, nefarious conduct. You know, they want people to just sit sit back 
and be silent in the church. And a lot of people are uh, being silent in the church. Uh, I think more people uh, uh, at the church that Eddie Long was preaching at, I think a lot of them probably knew what kind of lifestyle he was leading, uh, but they were silent. Uh, so what are your thoughts on that scripture right there? Touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. And, and, and why do you think a lot of pastors are using this uh, scripture uh, in their congregation? Do you think they're using that One to intimidate your church members? Uh, absolutely. One of my pet peeves is using scripture out of context using scripture out of context number one when you look at biblically speaking when god was using that he was talking about a very specific group of people which was the israelites which which were in the bible the chosen ones for him the israelites he was specifically talking to them but we all know that that carries an annotation that he's talking about his people all over the world don't touch not my anointing that the enemy ought to be careful when he coming up against god's anointing but he's not referring to when we commit egregious acts he's not referring to when we do things out of order he's not referring to when we want to be a friend to the world and we're broadcasting ourselves out on YouTube and all these different platforms and we want everybody to see us. See, it's okay when they're building us up. When Satan builds us up, all the adulation and all the accreditation that they give us, oh, it's wonderful. But the same people that you wanted to be a friend to when they begin to tear you down, now you want to say, uh, uh, no, touch not God's anointing and do his prophet no harm. <laughs> well, number one, once you step out of the will of God, you are no longer doing God's work and we can't consider you a prophet of God if you're not aligned with what God's will is so that doesn't apply to you one of my pet peeves is when you use God's scripture out of context or for your own selfish gain yeah every kid wants to say every childish uh, thinker wants to defend themselves and use scripture to defend themselves when it comes down to them being rebuked or corrected by the rod of correction but let me tell you something don't ever do that because number one God is not mocked God will not be mocked. And I, that's what I think about when we, we run to that real fact. Oh, touch touch not God. Come on now. Yeah, you know what? Uh, that's in uh, Psalms 105, uh, verses 15 through 17. Touch not mine anointing and do my prophets no harm. This is my assessment on that. You know, the anointed ones in these passages are, are not modern day Pentecostal preachers. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, every Christian is anointed if they are truly saved in the Lord because they have the Holy Spirit. And by having the Holy Spirit, that makes you anointed. Uh, the Bible right. scripture never promises that God's prophets, uh, anointed ones, children, or other faithful believers will never suffer harm from evil people. It never said that. Listen, Jesus was harmed and killed by evil people. Okay? So if God didn't spare his son, what makes you think that you can't be touched? Chris, we see Christians all the time in the United States and throughout the world being killed. Okay? So now, and Jesus said and explained to the Pharisees that God in his wisdom said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and others they will persecute. And that's in Luke chapter 11, verse 49. Listen, the Bible says all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall be persecuted. So when pastors use that scripture, they are trying to intimidate somebody in their church or somebody who outside the church who doesn't have any uh, biblical knowledge uh, uh, to put their mouth on them. They don't want that person to put their mouth on them and, 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 and expose their nefarious conduct. You know, so listen, man, well, uh, uh, well we have to stand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, hold on one second. I wanted to make a point. Hold on one second. I, I, hold on. We, we can go back to that. I, 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 I believe in standing up for truth and speaking God's word uh, without compromise. We have to do that, people. Listen, we're going to lose friends. We're going to lose family members. But God even even says that in his word that if you stand up for his, his, his truth, his word, you're going to lose friends. You're going to lose family members. You know, you're going to have family members that, that hate you. You know what I'm saying? Because you're trying to correct their behavior uh, by uh, sharing the gospel with them. So, but anyway, go ahead, brother. But this is this is part of our poison that's been uh, given to us and it's not been taught correctly. You're right. We're going to lose family members and loved ones. He said, I came to turn daughter against mo mother against daughter, son against father. And if we don't understand these things, this is the reason Satan is able to creep in to us through our mothers, our daughters, our sisters, our brothers, our friends, our co-workers, because we're looking at the body and we're not looking at the spiritual sense. So Satan is able to use those vessels to creep in because you got a cousin that's homosexual, because you got a cousin that's a thief and a robber and a liar. 
and you say, well, you know, my cousin, he's a good person. Good ain't got nothing to do with godly. The only thing that's good in this earth that is that that obeys God. There's nothing else good. I don't care if he meet that man or woman meets all the kind of credentials and standards that we set as men that don't make them good. Good ain't got nothing to do with God. There's a there's God's righteousness and there's man righteousness. Man has a way that seemeth right, but the ways thereof are death and destruction. So we always got to be careful to seek God's righteousness. Like he says in Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Because we've all been taught and conditioned and programmed a certain way. But God says you have to be uh, renewed by the renewing of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, brother, right. this has been all. This conversation is awesome. Well, you know what, man? Uh, we can go. Listen, I love talking about the word of God, man. Uh, but, you know, we have a, a time constraint for these videos. And, and now I'll right. tell you this. I wouldn't look at no three, three hour video. But I'll tell you this. Uh, you had over 50 million people look at a three hour video of Cat Williams talking that foolishness. And, and we'll and I'll do a video on him too because even though he mentioned God a couple of times, he ain't saved. He not saved. He said he was a Jehovah Witness one time. He was a Muslim, and and he said if there is a God, well there is a God. There's a true and living God. His name Jehovah. He has the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who gives the Holy Spirit to all those who confess, believe, and receive Christ as Savior, Lord, and truly believe that until the day that they take their last breath. The Bible says, uh, uh, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, some people may say, well, he, he said he was a believer in Jesus Christ or Charleston White said he's a believer in Jesus Christ. Well, as Charleston White said, he, he wants the spirit of God, but he don't want the word of God because Christians have the word. They don't have the spirit. And I had to do a video uh, just proving what he said. These people who are in the entertainment business, man, are saying some outlandish and foolish stuff. But you have millions of people who are listening to these folks and they are believing that foolishness and they are dying and going to hell. And so the thing is, brother, uh, I got a couple more questions for you, or at least one more question for you uh, before I wrap this up. Uh, but keep standing for the truth, brother. Keep standing for the truth. All right. Now, brother Anthony, what are your final thoughts about false prophet Jamal Harrison Bryant? Well, my final thought would be this. If you're listening to this, if you so happen to be listening to this, Mr. Jamal Harrison Bryant, um, I would ask you to look at this. You could look at this one or two ways. You could look at this as an attack. You can go on a defense. You can go on a self-pity journey and say that people are attacking you. Or you can look at this as a call to repentance, as a call to do what many of us teach congregations to do all over the world all the time. I always believe that as long as we're breathing breath, it's an opportunity that God has given us to get it right one more day. He said at night, no man working. But as long as you got daylight, you have a chance to get it right. Not saying that you won't because we all know that in the Bible, Jonah did not want to go preach to Nineveh because he believed that they wouldn't listen anyway. But that's not what I'm going to do. I'm not going to take Jonah's approach. I'm going to do what God told me to do on the first time. And I'm going to talk directly to you and say this. You are not a pastor. You're not a man of God. As of now, the things that you say do not represent God. Um, I'm not apologetic about representing God because my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said he thought it not robbery to be equal to God. And he meant that in the fact that we can represent God when we stand on what God said. Is. I am not Jehovah. I am not God. I'm a, represent a representative of God. And I stand in the gap and say this right now. You Right now, you could not be my pastor. I could not listen to your doctrine or your teaching because it does not align with the word of God. So those are my final thoughts on this situation. And I'll say this uh, for my final thoughts. Uh, God told Ezekiel to go and warn the wicked to turn from their sins. God said, Ezekiel, if you don't warn them and they die in their sins, their blood will be on your hands. But if you warn them and they die in their sins, then they are going to be responsible uh, for not repenting. And so, Jamal, you are well beyond that stage right there because you don't warn the people to turn away from their sins. You warn the people uh, to listen to you and be subservient to you and whatever you tell them. Uh, you want them to do what pastor say and well pastor in this regard and all the things that we have exposed uh, in this particular video you're absolutely wrong and you are not a man of God you are a false prophet and I'll say this to the church that he pastors people 
leave that church immediately and find you a Bible believing church that's preaching that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven and that they go strictly based on the word of God and no opinions and no outside influences is going to sway them to preach anything otherwise. Not another gospel, uh, not another thought, not another opinion. God's word is the standard by which all truth is measured. And on that note, brother, I'd like to thank you for coming on the show and having this spirited conversation with me, exposing this false prophet, Jamal Harrison Bryant. Let's give Anthony Simmons a round of applause. Thanks for coming to the show, my brother. Uh, now, if you've liked what you've heard in this video, like and share this video. Let's make this video go viral for the kingdom's sake. God bless you.